They named their AI, AI. You have to give them points for that. Hey guys, I'm Tom of Tech Jab, and I'm here at WWDC 24. Apple Park is just over there, and obviously there's been a ton of news, but obviously the headline's all about Apple intelligence. And this is what we've been waiting for. Proper, tangible, useful, accessible AI, all in one place, and that just works. It's actually a really big deal and also quite overwhelming. I was sat at the event as they spent like an hour and a half talking about AI and I came away a little bit overwhelmed. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down. What is Apple intelligence? Why should you care? The good and the bad, because there is also one kind of major problem. So what exactly is it? Well, it's called Apple intelligence. And what was most impressive right out the gate was the fact that during their like two hour long keynote, I think they said the word AI, like the regular use of the word artificial intelligence, once maybe, everything else was kind of machine learning. And there was no mention of tops or neural engines particularly. Unlike Intel and Qualcomm and AMD and Nvidia and everyone else who were like, oh, our system has 45 tops of processing performance for the AI or 48 or 50. There was really no mention of the tech, which is obviously very Apple. It's all about the user experience and the features because really you shouldn't need to care about any of that stuff. It should just work. So what can Apple Intelligence and this new Siri actually do? Well, simple things like prioritizing your notifications and even summarizing them, like if you have a whole bunch of messages in a group chat. And then there's the new writing tools that can rewrite and change the tone and proofread and summarize your texts and emails and essays. And then there's the AI generated images from creating your own gen mojis, turning your rough sketches in notes or freeform into fully formed images with image wand or experimenting in the upcoming image playground app. Now, again, a lot of these individual features aren't new. We've seen them all before. You can get them elsewhere, but we haven't seen them packaged together in a way that's so easy to use and also safer, which we'll talk about in a second. And it's also personal to you, your calendar, your contacts, you know, what you're looking at on screen, that personalization and also the entire app ecosystem. So while I've been here, I've had the chance to have a little hands-on demo with the AI and Siri and see actually how it works. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to film it or take any photos, but I do have a few thoughts, a few takeaways, including the really cool animation that you get around the edge of the phone when you activate Siri. Obviously, anyone who's 13 years old or older can register an Apple ID and therefore use an iPhone. And so this needs to be kid-friendly. Everyone needs to be able to use this. So how does it all work? Well, for the nerds among you, Apple have built their own 3 billion parameter multimodal generative AI model that lives on device, okay? For everyone else, Apple have built their own AI that runs on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and that doesn't need an internet connection. But it can't do everything on device. Sometimes it needs to pull more information from the internet, or the processing power required is just not gonna be good for your phone and it will drain the battery. So if it can't do it on the device, it'll then go up to Apple's cloud AI servers. And that'll cover most stuff. But if that's not enough, then we also have ChatGPT integration, all of which sounds very complicated. But what makes this Apple intelligence so good is that you don't need to think about it. You just ask Siri a question or to make your photo pop or when you're creating a Gemmoji with a text prompt or it's rewriting the tone of an email you've just written, it'll just do it without the need for you to jump between a stable diffusion app or throw it into Photoshop or sign up for ChatGPT4 and whatever else to access similar features. But what's unique to Apple is that they own the hardware, you know, they make their own Apple Silicon, they make their own devices and also they have their own servers in the cloud and their own software. But then there's the privacy factor. Firstly, as much as possible will be done on device without using the cloud. Then when it does use the cloud, it's using Apple's private secure servers, which have been independently verified. And if they haven't been verified and checked the boxes for security, then they can't be used by the phone. You know, within that Apple ecosystem, it's going to be as safe as you can possibly reasonably get using AI. And then if it does pull on ChatGPT integration, then it will ask you if you want to share your photo with it and share your text with it. But it'll be transparent when you're doing that and if you actually want it to do that. But crucially, no one, including Apple, will have any access to your data. It won't be logged or stored anywhere. And only the specific data it actually needs to carry out your request will be used. I shouldn't be making this video outside. Okay, let's wrap up because there is one big problem, aside from my sweaty t-shirt. And that is that you need an iPhone 15 Pro or an M1 powered iPad or Mac. They tell me it's because of the compute required and that the A17 Pro chip in the 15 Pro Max is like twice as powerful as the 16 that you got in the previous year. So that is the reason why cynics among us may say that this is Apple's way of getting us to buy the latest iPhone, possibly. But I do appreciate that you do need a good amount of on-device computational performance to actually make all this work. So the problem is as magical and amazing as Apple intelligence is and this new Siri, Unless you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max or you know, an upcoming iPhone 16 or a MacBook with a M1 or an iPad with an M1, you're just not going to get any of this yet. 
So what do you think? Are you excited by it? Do you hate the idea of it like Elon Musk? And if you've got any questions at all, drop a comment as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to go inside and cool down a little bit now. If you enjoyed this video, then a cheeky like and subscribe would be fantastic. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.